Today's reflection is based on the Gospel according to Matthew chapter 21 verses 1 to 11. And the way we perceive time, I would say, is very interesting, especially during these moments of confinement, isolation, and as a colleague like to call it, compassionate distance. Because what happened only two months ago seems now to be ancient history. For example, do we recall the title of the South Korean movie that won the Oscar for Best Movie? Do you remember if February had 28 or 29 days? Do you know what happened to Brexit? It was the big story two months ago. But with everything going on with our lives, we have moved on to something else. And one of the reasons is the way our new cycles are organized. A new cycle is how the media are reporting some events, and traditionally this cycle lasts 24 hours. This is why Prime Minister Premiers are giving a press conference every 24 hours. After this mark, well, newer and fresher news are needed to feed the beast. However, with the rise of uh, cable and satellite news channel uh, broadcasting 24-7, seven, uh, seven, blogs and social media, our attention span and memory seem to have considerably shortened. We desire fresh numbers, new development, breaking news, more commentary right away. We want them now. This tendency to rapidly up to the next news, object, trend, or event is probably as old as humankind. Like I said this morning, it's all about the gospel according to Matthew. It's the story of the triumphant entry of, Jer uh, of Jesus into Jerusalem. And we know that the crowd who cheered him seem to have changed their mind and allegiance only a few days later. Like many before us, we might struggle to understand the, the reasoning behind this tragic se sequence of events. How is it possible, we wonder? Then it comes to us. The crowd was made up of human beings. People like you and me, People who are ambivalent, people who are fickle, people who love one day and move on the next one. And Jesus probably understood human nature very well. So following a successful ministry in Galilee, decided to bring his message to Jerusalem. And in order to have a huge impact, he selected the busy time of the festival of Passover to enter the city with his disciple. And back then, Passover was really a huge deal. It was a big event. Historian and archaeologists estimate that the city of Jerusalem, which was already a large city, quadrupled its population during that week, four times bigger. I try to find the equivalent. So imagine if everyone living in the Pontiac Regional County Municipality, from Charville, Fort Coulonge, Portage, Dufort, all over, so on, decided on the same week to visit the village of Couillon and stay there for a week. And you would not even be close to reach the same proportion of growth. Now, obviously, to be noticed, Jesus need what we would call today a good publicity stunt. Something that would attract the attention in this chaos. He decided to dig into Zacharias' pro prophecy and to ride into Jerusalem on a donkey. And to be more precise, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Jesus little PR setup really worked. The crowd was ooh, 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 the crowd was hungry for a messianic figure noticed him right away and went totally berserk. 
In the original Greek version we have, the author of the Gospel used the word for an earthquake to describe the turmoil he created. The people present that day understood all the symbols and gave Jesus a royal welcome. Some spread their clothes on the road, others cut branches from the trees and placed them on Jesus' path. And in less time it takes to tell, he became G Jerusalem's main attraction. It was the place to be even if many had no clue who Jesus was. Who is he? They inquire. Who cares? He looked like a real hero. So we will listen to him, we will believe in him, we will follow him. So more than all his sermons, parables or miracles, this single moment made Jesus very dangerous for the establishment of his time. For the elite and power, there's nothing scarier than people becoming excited, reclaiming hope, and organizing themselves. This is how revolutions start. This is how mass movement can sweep everything on its path. The priests, the scribes, and the elders of the people understood they need to change a narrative and speed up this new cycle. They have to find ways to lead the crowd to forget about it and move on to something else. They need to create this impression that when arrested and trailed, people wonder, who is he again? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Um, um, uh, oh, J J Jesus of Nazareth in, in Galilee. Well, he must not be such a great messiah after mm -hmm. all. Well, well, let's wait for the next one. And somehow those in power succeeded. We all know the end of the tragic story. However, we still want to remember and celebrate this event today. Because it teaches us a thing or two about courage and faithfulness. Jesus and his followers possess, you see, no formal authority to change their world. They were just a bunch of nobodies from nowhere. And yet, neighbors and friends, strangers and distant travelers, men and women, march into the city gate with Jesus, filled with the desire to build a new world in which all the humiliation, hardships, and exclusionary practices that had been so long defined their existence would disappear. And history is filled with many more stories of common folks who have recognized that they were able to accomplish more together than they could alone. People who organize themselves, people who signed petition, people who protest, and of course, it was not easy. Those in power, those who benefited from the status quo, those who had something to lose, opposed them and attacked them. It took a great deal of courage, determination, and conviction for do these individuals to proclaim publicly things like peace is possible in a time of war. Justice can overcome systematic racism. Or dignity is a right for all, without exception. Today we might not remember the names of those movers and shakers, the protests they organized or the sacrifice they made. And still, they got things moving. They brought change. They succeeded despite the odds. We might have forgotten what they have done, who they were, but we surely can enjoy the fruits of their labor. When we wonder what could Jesus probably, possibly sorry, have done in approximately one week that disappointed the supported so much that they turn on him, we have to come to the conclusion that the answer is absolutely nothing. 
He did all the right things. With his disciple, he marched, raised issue, challenged the authorities. No, it's us, the crowd, the people who got distracted and move on to the next event or the next breaking news. Maybe it's in our human nature to easily forget. Maybe this is why it's so important to remain faithful to our beliefs and our conviction, especially during these times when our, we feel our brain will overload. Maybe this is why we need to focus our attention on what is really important and life-giving as we begin this Holy Week. Maybe this is why we need story like this. Amen.